Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you as always for tuning in today. And today I will be working on the 2004 Honda Pilot that's up on my lift. And specifically, uh, after that inspection video, a lot of you were curious about how I was going to handle that very rusty bumper in the back and possibly some structural repair. So in today's episode, I'm going to tackle that very thing. Let's get started. And here's a closer look at the damage that I'm looking to deal with today. You might also note that the spare tire is missing from this Pilot. So if you're looking up under here with yours, you want to see what I see? Remove the spare tire. Job one is going to be to remove this rear bumper cover so that I can access the metal underneath. To do that, there's some plastic clips here. Uh, and also you're going to need to remove the mud flap back here. There's three fasteners for that. Then there's another screw up that goes up through here on both sides. There may be some fasteners up top. I'll cover those if I find them. But for now, I'm going to be removing this. A little WD-40 on these plastic clips really helps loosen them up. And I'm using this tool and all special tools and things that you see, I will be linking in the description. I have this cool Phillips head socket that I use to get into these screws uh, so I don't have to take the wheel off. We used to have to install mud flaps at the dealer. Got paid more money if I didn't have to take the wheel off. One more screw up here. Don't forget about the last screw that goes up in here. Once the mud flap is removed, there's another screw here, but if you don't have mud flaps, it's just gonna be this screw, this screw, and then the one up there. Same drill over on this side. And it seems the long screws go through the mud flap, if you have them. If you don't, well, ignore this. After opening the tailgate, it looks like there are two more large screws in here with giant rubber grommets on them. I don't believe we have to remove the taillights or anything. I'm using an impact driver screwdriver for this. I don't think you really need it, but it, well, it gives me plenty of leverage. I actually made that pretty easy to remove. I think the bumper cover is ours now. Now, when you pull this off, try to pull, well, out first up in the front and then back afterward. So pull out. Almost feels like there's more here. There's something else in there. But you wanna pull out to disengage these clips, but make sure the screw is out first. I found another clip right there. Looks like there's some here as well. There's some there and one there in the middle. Switching to safety glasses mode because once the rust starts raining down, the last thing I want to do is get it in my eyes. And one there is missing, but there's one there, one there, and one there. These are hard to get to with a trailer hitch in a way. But I'm pretty sure this will have to be destroyed and then replaced with a new clip. Let's try this again. Pull out, and then back. I'm beginning to think there's something under this taillight. Taillight's gotta come off, and let's look what we find right there. Two eight millimeter fasteners holding this on, and I just noticed that the inside of this taillight is broken. <laughs> <laughs> For these, pull straight back. As straight, as straight back as you can. No, it's just clipped in here. So the taillight doesn't need to be removed, but I didn't want to get too aggressive with it, but it's just clipped in here. That's funny though. <laughs> I found a penny under the bumper. That's a first for me. Money back bumper. I don't see anything in here that would hold us up. Well, I found it and it sucks pretty bad. And it is this trailer hitch that's in my way. The next step is gonna be to just drop this out of here. But I don't know if I can show you this or not. I'll try to get up in there. But there are 
you might be able to see up between there 10 millimeter fasteners there's one of them there that are going up through but as i said they're underneath this trailer hitch so the trailer hitch has got to come down to remove the trailer hitch there's these three fasteners here there would normally be two fasteners right there holding it onto the back of the bumper that are missing uh, and then on this side there's another three fasteners but first i'll get the wiring and everything off to be honest i don't really see myself using the trailer hitch but we'll we'll see i'll be honest i don't have a ton of faith in this ending well at this point <laughs> Russ never sleeps, as they say. Woke up this morning thinking, you know what? I could really use a rust shower. I'm staying dirty. Did you use different bolts on this side? Yes, you did. Good for you. That's not good. All right, well, two came out. That last one's just spinning. Maybe it got cross-threaded on its way in. And now, torch time. And I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but if you're gonna get into rusty stuff like this, having a torch handy is probably a very good idea. As I've said in the past, it was made with fire it will submit to fire in the end. And today is the end for that fastener. <laughs> Goodbye, trailer hitch. We can think of this as weight reduction and yes, this whole piece of paint just came off the front of this thing when I dropped it. It just came off the face of this. Actually, it's more than that. It's like metal. It's not just paint. It's like most of the metal to this. That was able to expose though, are these fasteners up in here that you can see these 10 millimeters that are what's holding me back. And I have my doubts as to how many of those I'm actually gonna be able to remove. Today's forecast calling for rush showers all day long. Just so that I can say I did it. Penetrating oil. Another one. That's just spinning. That's oh, in my ear. I'm actually happy that at least those two came out so I won't have to fight around the muffler. But these aren't your average fasteners. They're a little special. Yeah, it'd be nice if you were out of my face, thanks. All the weight reduction that's occurred already is phenomenal. This one and this one are the hangers on. The rest came out, which one, two, three. So three came out, two stayed. Yeah, it's a pretty good average, I suppose. And as I stated, I'm just gonna come up in here with a drill and try to drill enough of that fastener out to where uh, it's no longer holding the bumper on. I'm thinking it might be a good thing that the trailer hitch isn't going back on. I'm not going through yet, but it's getting close in some spots like there. Told you, have your safety glasses on. See, see what happens? My only goal with these is to knock the head off. I think I might have a better idea. This is my new weapon. It's a die grinder. This is one of my bits that I use for porting. It's for cast iron, so this bolt's not gonna do nothing with it. But it will allow me to get up in there past the bumper because the problem I was having was that the chuck of the drill wouldn't slip up past between the bumpers to get the drill bit to the bolt head. So I'm just gonna try and grind them off with this. The speed's just too fast on that and that it's just too long. Maybe a shorter bit, I'll have better control. 
Well, they finally submitted. And that seemed to be the quickest way to get in there and get that done. Now let's get this bumper skin off. Check it out. I'm covered in man glitter. Shiny. Okay, bumper, let's do this. Finally. Looks like these were metal clips holding those top deals in. I bet I can get away with just a couple of them, especially for what I'm doing with it. So I'm, I'm not going for pristine restoration, just uh, making sure it's together. It's weird that this would be up here because usually this is in the back underneath, but I guess that's where they put this. But you can see why we're here now because there ain't much left of that at all. There are four fasteners holding on what remains of this bumper. There's a nut here up top. And then there's another bolt underneath here, right there. Same on the other side. Bolt underneath here, I believe these are 17 millimeter. And then another one up top. Thank you for coming out. Thanks to you as well. Those look like they're 14. And they are. Let's go for the dramatic finish. <laughs> a little bit of rust. It'll buff out. Wasn't a whole lot left to this thing at all. All this used to be metal. Not anymore. I'm glad I'm up on my tetanus. Now this side doesn't concern me too much. There's the remnants of our bolt that I removed. We can probably get that the rest of the way out some way, somehow. Anyway. Coming over here to this other side though, well, it looks like the beam is still solid. It's just this support for the body on this side is rotted out. So I think I'm just gonna coat the ever-loving snot, oops, the ever-loving snot out of this with some uh, rust inhibitor and uh, put it back together. With the bumper removed, I now have a much better look at the uh, damage from the rust. And what I'm gonna do to make my determination is stuff that I can poke my screwdriver through. I'm not as concerned about like the floor or anything like that. I'm more concerned about these structural things. I'm most concerned about this. So I'll, oh geez, <laughs> I'll start here. But right here, that's the end of it. Well viewers, a lot has happened since that rusty bumper came off of this pilot. Let's go over what I've done. Ta-da! A completely new rear suspension for one, along with some new rear brakes. And I was able to repair that rust damage that was up here on the body so that I could mount the subframe. So I've been a bit busy. If you missed those videos, I will link them down in the description for you. Uh, I also did some additional body work. You might notice that this inner cover is gone. So while looking into this, what seemed to be minor fender rust on the outside, I came in and I removed this inner cover here and found that there was more rust, which I have repaired. In the same way, I repaired uh, this rust hole that was here that I've shown in another video. Those videos, everything I'm mentioning will all be linked down in the description. The reason this pertains to the rear bumper is because this piece here was completely rotted away, and this is one of the uh, fasteners that holds the rear bumper in place. I had to put this back up in here. It's now in there. I'm gonna reinstall this inner fender uh, cover here and uh, we'll get started with uh, installing the rear bumper and rear bumper skin. I also started on some exhaust work back here. You might remember in another video that the exhaust was all welded together. Uh, well, I've installed a new catalytic converter and a new uh, Y pipe up front here. For lack of a better word, I'm calling it a Y pipe. Anyway, my welder broke during the process of this. I have a new one on the way. It's not going to affect anything we're doing now, but I do believe my welder was acting up when I was doing that uh, body repair. It's one of the reasons I think the welds don't look so great. Anyway, new welder on the way. I should have this fixed up as well. Still need to do an alignment on all this, but I'm gonna wait until after I finish the front suspension and do all four wheels at once. Something I wanna talk about real quick before I install the new bumper. Uh, you might remember when I removed the trailer hitch, I had to cut one of the bolts to do that. Well, there was still a piece of broken bolt and nut up inside this, dare I call it a frame rail. 
I was able to fish that out. I took a magnet, went down through this hole and grabbed what remained and pulled it out of here. Well, then I'm faced with no threaded anything on the other side of this, and I didn't want to have a missing fastener. So what I did was, is I drilled two holes on either side of where this fastener would go. Then I fished a nut through this opening and attached it to a bolt through here and pulled it tight. And while it was down like that, I took my welder and welded it up through the two holes that I just drilled on either side of it and that's holding the nut in place now. And I actually went back and ground off some of the welds that were here. So it's kind of like it never happened. And if anything ever happened to this fastener in the future, I feel okay with it because it's got just a couple of plug welds here holding it in. So it could break free if it needed to is kind of what I'm getting at. Anyway, this has been repaired. If I do want to install a trailer hitch in the future, I'll be able to do so without difficulty and I won't have to go through all this trouble to get to things because, you know, with this muffler in the way and everything else in the way, it'd be a lot more difficult to deal with this. I'm glad I dealt with it now. But there's a thought for you if you find yourself in a similar situation where you've got a broken fastener up inside a frame or something like that. Like I said, I drilled holes on either side of this and I was able to weld a nut through those holes and this guy isn't going anywhere now as a result. I also went in, you'll probably see the black area here. Well, I painted that with uh, the Eastwood chassis black. I just took this piece off of here. It's just held in by a bunch of screws on the back side. Now, some of these fasteners that hold the top of the bumper to the body have kind of gone away, but I do have three left and I believe that's gonna be enough. I also, just for good measure, ran a tap through each one of these to make sure that these threads were good because they were a bit rusty. So this thing should be ready to install. The new bumper is just gonna, well, go over these studs and hook up on the bottom. I got a new replacement bumper. It's not original equipment, but it will work just fine. It's way better than the rusty thing that was on here before. I took the liberty, uh, not only with the fasteners that hold the rear bumper on, but also the fasteners that uh, would hold the trailer hitch on. I ran a tap through all that stuff. That way uh, those threads would be nice and clean. And then after I did that, I coated everything with a uh, rust encapsulator. And the theme of the day is always trust but verify. Now I've started these uh, fasteners by hand. I'm just gonna make sure that they go in with the ratchet. And I wanna know that now, because the last thing I wanna do is cross thread something while I'm running it in with an impact. So just to be sure, make sure that it all moves. And it seems to. These are 14 on top. And 17 on the bottom. It's got a bumper again. One last thing before the bumper skin goes on, and this is weird, like this foam piece goes on top, whereas it seems to me something should be here, but oh well, this is, you saw me take it apart. So that goes there. I think I also mentioned that I went back up into here and covered all this with rust encapsulator after cleaning it all up. Looks a lot better, and hopefully that will prevent future corrosion. And this slides up into the gap underneath where the tail light goes. There's also this groove here around the side that everything needs to go into. It sort of clips in there. Something you want to be mindful of when installing this, there are little hooks on the top of that metal uh, support underneath here. If you get on top of those hooks, the bumper is going to rest up against this weather seal. But if you get it in there correctly, you'll have a gap that runs all the way across like this. My screw lined up perfectly. And that was by design because I actually put the bumper back on, found where this hole was supposed to be, marked it, and then put that in there. That way I was assured that it got into the right place. Yeah, the color match isn't so great here. I did just a little bit of body work here. I, I didn't really try hard. I just wanted to get rid of the rust and the holes was all, which I accomplished. And I didn't even bother to match the paint, but I think it's close enough. 
and for my purposes, it works excellent. But if you wanna take more time doing it, go ahead. Part of the reason I painted this with the Eastwood chassis black is because I'm gonna be putting fog lights on in the front. The front has a similar piece that was also faded and, well, a really light gray that would have looked weird next to the fog lights, which are a darker color like this. So this is kind of to tie in with the front when I get to that point. There were these two screws that held it in up here and here. You're not crazy, there was a piece here that I removed because I thought there might be some fasteners under it. But before I put it back on, I figured I'll just clean at the very least the front part. Oh yeah, there was that penny or something under there. This piece should just clip back in. Uh, could it be better? Yes. But some of the pieces are broken off, so that's that. Looks better than it did. It just looks so different up under here now. Anyway, you might remember I had to drop the uh, trailer hitch down in order to access these fasteners that hold the top of the bumper in place. And now, as I stated, I only have three of them. I'm okay with that. I think that's gonna hold it in place just fine. But look at that shiny bumper. That's awesome. But I'll get those in. Also, there's some plastic clips that hold this on. A couple here, and then we'll get to the mud flaps. Probably a little anti-seize on these wouldn't hurt. Plan to get a spare tire too at some point. And now for the plastic clips. A lot of these are gonna end up being new. We get two big long ones that go up in here. I think that's all those. There are three screws that hold the bumper on and three screws that hold the mud flap on if you have them equipped. Now the two screws that go into the bumper are sort of regular size screws and they go here and here. And then the third screw with the washer like this goes up in here. So these are kind of normal looking screws. And then this one up in here has that washer on it. At least that's the way I do it. And then the mud flap is held on here, here, and here with the remaining screws. The short one, I believe, goes through here, and the long ones go through here and here. That side's done. Oh, and there was a vent up behind this part of the bumper that I almost forgot to install, but I was able to just pull this back, pop it in there, it just clips into place. Uh, before I got this far. I think that about wraps it up. Well, that certainly took longer than I had originally anticipated, and there is still much work to be done on the front of the vehicle, but I feel like the rear of the vehicle is wrapped up with the inclusion of this new rear bumper, which is way better than the crusty, rusty thing that I took off of here. So if you have an older Honda and you are in the rust belt, check the rear bumper because there may not be much of it left and you may need to deal with it. And I hope the information in this video was helpful to you. In addition to doing the bumper and all that stuff, I also went in and did some LED lights in the rear, only in some. The turn signals, well, I wasn't able to do those, but I was able to do the brake lights and the reverse lights. The reverse lights I really cared about because that helps me see when I back up. I should also mention that I replaced this taillight that was broken. You might remember this piece came out on the inside. I got this one off of eBay and installed it along with the new LED bulbs. Anyway, I took care of that while I was in there as well, so it should wrap up all the work that I plan to do back here, but there is still much work to be done in the front. I'll put links in the description to additional videos, including about uh, all those repairs I did with the rear suspension and that structural repair that I did to make those easy for you to find. Also links to parts, tools, and airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions not covered by the scope of this video. All that link down in the description for you to make it easy. I post videos on Friday, so be sure to come back and see me then. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time.